If you'd asked me 12 months ago what my favorite car of the next year would be, I would be shocked if I was actually hearing myself say what I'm about to say, which is a Suzuki Swift Sport. I bought this car for about $7,000. It did have a couple of problems, but over the coming months, I spent way too much time and way too much money on this mad little car, buying parts from Japan and turning it into what it is now. It's got the seats, it's got the roll cage, it's got suspension, wheels and tires, everything from Japan where I could, and I absolutely love this car. So in this video, we're gonna go through buying it, we're gonna go through the modifications, plus there's a whole host of new modifications that you haven't seen yet. We're gonna do some track testing, plus I'll reveal exactly how much that all cost. The Suzuki Swift Sport actually looks pretty good in a tiny, functional Japanese kind of way. Compared to the normal Swift, the Sport version slaps in a bunch of tasty mods, including a specially built 1.6 litre high revving four cylinder engine with VVT, forged pistons, and uprated valve springs, making 123 brake horsepower or 92 kilowatts at the engine or about 9 kilowatts at the wheels. There's factory lowered suspension, stiffer shocks, a body kit, twin exhausts, special sport seats, and the car was designed to be the basis of a Suzuki World Rally car. Coming in at just over a thousand kilos, it makes enough power and is light enough to be a fun all-rounder. In fact, some people have been as bold to say the car represents a kind of purity that's reminiscent of the original Golf GTI. Either way, in a world of increasing autonomy, boring cars and the extinction of manuals, a fun cheap car like this that was originally $25,000 could deliver a lot of smiles per mile without breaking the bank. And most importantly, there are loads of mods you can throw at it from Japan, which is exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so that's a little bit of information about the car. Next step, I just gotta go give it a proper clean, people, because um, it's a little bit nasty in here. And then uh, we'll throw it up on the hoist, have a look, see what we've got, see if there's any problems, and then let the modifications begin. So I got the Swift up on the hoist, and the main thing that I want to see is, well, that that would be why the car smells like oil after you drive it because there is oil dripping down onto the exhaust look how wet it is down here there's the filter looks like it's actually coming from the oil filter housing it looks pretty clean it looks like there's heaps of room isn't there to work on everything yeah and hopefully uh lots of room for mad uh tire choices it's as had, well it's had front shocks but maybe the, but the back ones look original so maybe the back ones are knocking you know what I mean, like they're just holding worn out. I'm off to Super Cheap Auto to get everything that I need to repair and service my new nugget. I'm going to be doing a lot of modifications to this car, but I want to make sure it's running properly and not leaking everywhere first. If I can fix it myself on the cheap, that means more money for mods. This stuff is absolutely awesome and I'll be using it for my first job to clean up under the car so I can see exactly where the leak is coming from. After that, it's time to drop the oil and the filter. What I thought was going to be a quick, simple fix is actually turning out to be way more complex than I'd anticipated. The oil filter relocation thing also has a cooler on it that has coolant running into it because it's so close to the cat. Which is different to everything else out there. So you've got to remove this bit of the exhaust, then you've got to remove the heat shield, and now we have to remove the air conditioning so that we can access one bolt that's on top of that. It's either take the aircon off or take the headers off, and I reckon the headers is a way harder job. On a normal Suzuki Swift, this is a way easier job, but access on the Sport model makes it absolutely horrible, and it's not surprising that nobody else attempted to fix this before it was sold. The O-ring is hard as nails, so it's definitely the culprit, but I got two more for 12 bucks, which means hopefully it's a $6 fix. This one actually feels like rubber, which is a good thing, so with a small smattering of oil, it goes back into the oil relocation housing, and then I'll carefully put it back up onto the engine, making sure I don't pinch it on anything, before I then get my spaghetti fingers back in to reattach it. I'm 
I won't know if this has been a successful fix until the car is full of oil and running again. So I'm putting on a new filter and then filling up with Castrol Edge with fluid titanium. This is the only oil we use and perfect for a car like this little Swift, which will be spending most of its life being driven to the limit on racetracks. Castrol Edge have been supporting Mighty Car Mods for over 10 years. I'm also going to change the cabin filter because this is a cheap and easy way of making sure you're not breathing in airborne particles of human slime. Our friend Paulie showed us this cool trick of adding an air freshener to the filter to keep the inside of the car melon fresh. You can get these from the Mighty Car Mods website shipped worldwide. With that done, it's time to check the factory power figure. On the dyno, my Swift made 79.7 kilowatts. When it comes to weight, the Suzuki Swift Sport is 1,090 kilos. In totally stock form on the racetrack, the Suzuki Swift got a time of just over one minute, 100.45. I'm gonna be modifying my car with almost exclusively mad high-end JDM parts and these wheels are no different. So I got these uh, imported from Japan through Import Monster. These are a set of Weds TC105Xs. What do you need to know about these? They're made in Japan, they're light, there's racing pedigree, and they look the absolute business. WED's wheels are designed and manufactured in Japan, and they've got various fitments and styles from road cars through to lightweight race wheels. The TC105X is a racing wheel offering incredible strength and lightness for the track. The wheels also utilize vacuum deposition of aluminium paint, an industry first, which means there's a smoother surface due to molecule overlapping. It means they're super shiny, and the color tone shifts depending on the viewing angle. But all of this comes at a price. Because it is a track focused battle, we're using Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. These are a 205-45-17 with this awesome laser etched velvet touch sidewall here. Now the Cup 2 is a track focused but street legal tire that was developed with Mercedes AMG, Porsche and Ferrari. The Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 is the tire for those looking for high speed track performance while still being street legal. Designed for endurance, grip and control, a tire like this not only helps with corner speed but will also help with acceleration and braking. And Michelin sent these to us as sponsors of the show. So let's install them on the wheels. We're starting with the weds and I've got a feeling that this fitment is going to look absolutely incredible on my little Suzuki Swift Sport. So over here on the old Swifty we're going from a, uh, this is a 205-45-16 uh, and this one here is coming in at 15.95 kilos good for a stock wheel. Uh, and the weds, which more rubber but less weight in the wheel, is coming in at 16.15. So only 20 grams difference. Oh, that's awesome. Which is actually up, incredible. You've gone up to a 17, which also means more room for brakes. Yeah. So across all four tyres, I've added 80 grams. I've, I've added a Mars bar. Continuing my theme of trying to use as many JDM parts as possible on my Suzuki Swift Sport, I got myself a set of Tang coilovers from Japan. These are an affordable set of JDM coilovers, the Tane Flex Z. While there's much more expensive options, these coilovers came into Australia for a little over $1,700. I could have spent more, but I've spent way too much money ordering parts for my car already from Japan, as you'll see in upcoming episodes. These are a simple unit, but you get height adjustment and 16 level linear damping force adjustment. And for full clarity, this is not sponsored. I bought and paid full price for these, and I have no idea if they're actually going to be any good or if I'll swap them out later for a more track oriented setup. Tain is a suspension brand that people have been using for years in their modified JDM cars and while the sky's the limit in terms of budget I didn't want to spend as much as my whole car on a set of coilovers so these ones here are a budget alternative they're kind of a lower tier in the Tain range. We're going to start by installing the coilovers on the Swift because being Japanese it should be really straightforward. Uh, I love story that might be we wasn't supposed to happen so much talk around us we became numb to the yapping it was like 05 got my license to drive picked you up in my pops car went for a ride couldn't no one tell us nothing that night was ours all the stars aligned and you were so damn fine yeah 
It was young love, young hearts were so pure We trust love is so hard to endure A few years passed, made the move out west It became harder to maintain, it put us to the test I hope you know I did my best Every birthday and Christmas Scraping up every penny, eating dinner for breakfast Restless, but you left me so breathless Every time you smiled and looked into my eyes I used all the corny lines I wrote for you a dozen times My pen dancing on this paper in your room of mine It's only taken around an hour and the Swift is now officially lowered with coilovers. We have yellow Mighty Car Mods chop shirts like this. If you've got a yellow car, this is a mandatory buy. You have to buy one. For my Suzuki Swift Sport, I've ordered this K&N intake system from Super Cheap Auto. It was a special order, which is a service that they offer. This is not a sponsored video. I paid retail for it. This here was $400 and $95. Now, you might have seen on some Mighty Car Mods videos in the past some of the kind of carbon fiber intakes we've run on our European cars. They can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Again, we're trying to use things that are reasonable with their cost. So, what do you get for $495? You get a filter, a pipe, some adapters, and some instructions. That's it. That's what you get. This filter and adapter was $500, and the general assumption is that a bigger air filter means there'll be more flow and therefore more power. But depending on the quality of your filter, there may be a cost. More flow may equate to less filtration. But these are race cars, and that may be the price that we have to pay. This system is a specific kit that's made for my model of Suzuki Swift Sport. And my principal goal here is a power increase, not just noise. And for $500 and a claim that I'm guaranteed to increase power, I'm hoping to see some significant gains. Well, we have done some extensive testing on pod filters, factory filters on turbocharged cars and naturally aspirated cars are on the dyno. So we're gonna link all of them below so that you can have a look. But for now, we're gonna install this stuff. I'm feeling a little uncertain about my expensive intake. I'm removing the factory sealed cold air intake and then I'll be mounting the pod filter on top of the engine, which is hot. The mass airflow meter gets swapped into the new intake adapter section and then I'll point a piece of flexible pipe at the filter and run the other end down to the bumper to secure it with cable ties. Okay, the engine cover goes back on and my intake is done. This here is a Monster Sport exhaust that I got through Import Monster from Japan. So this here is a direct factory replacement performance exhaust out of Japan and is one of the best systems that you can get for a Suzuki Swift. Monster Sport was a performance workshop set up in 1983 by Nobuhiro Tajima, nicknamed Monster former rally driver for Suzuki and known for his triumphs at Pikes Peak Hill Climb and Silverstone Race to the Sky, which he won eight times. In 1986, he established Suzuki Sport, the in-house sports division of Suzuki. As well as exhausts, they sell tons of stuff for the Swift platform, including intakes, brakes, clutches, piston kits, bracing and more. It's time to start installing the exhaust system onto the Suzuki Swift. Using the exhaust hanger removal tool and our Ryobi side dacker, we can get rid of the factory system. And hopefully, like the other Japanese parts that I've bought, this Monster Sport piece of kit should bolt straight on without any modifications at all. Yeah, I mean, really in an ideal situation, what we'd be looking at doing is just chopping all of that out, throwing it in the bin, and then just putting a high flow cat here and a bit of pipe there. Using the Translate app on my iPhone, I can decipher that I need to install these little heat proof stickers to stop the bumper melting. After that, it's a straightforward swap and I can tell you this is a very well made piece of kit. The Swift will be getting a full exhaust eventually and I've already got the headers, but that will require a tune, so that's happening later. For now, to keep it fair, I'll just be swapping out the rear end, but how good does that look? And now it's time to have a listen. I'm taking a short break from the modifications so I can get myself a race suit, gloves, boots, helmet and hands device so that I can hit up some mad track days. It's important that the suit feels comfortable, particularly while pretending to drive a fast car. That's how you spend as much uh, as a car on your safety stuff. And now I'll be full banana suit man. 
This race suit is FIA approved and designed to be lightweight, sturdy and offer good mobility. Its main purpose is to be fireproof thanks to the Nomex material used and buy you some time if you're unlucky enough to be stuck in a car fire. Gloves, also fireproof and designed to offer maximum grip and steering wheel feedback. The hands device, as seen in Formula 1, attaches to a compatible helmet to minimise head movement and rotation and in turn reduce the chance of serious neck injuries. According to NASCAR, IndyCar and Formula 1, this device has saved hundreds of lives. The helmet also has fireproof properties and allowance for microphone and headphones for rally use. Lastly, racing boots are designed like sports shoes to be lightweight and comfortable, but also offer fire protection thanks to the addition of Nomex and good pedal feel. Meanwhile, of course, I've been back to Japan for a little... Hello! Hello! Uh, thanks to Import Monster, I have got myself... Look at this, everybody. Look what's in here. This is a Bride Zeta 4. Lomax fixed back bucket seat in the iconic like 90s design. These have been like winning races since like 1990. Obviously people get fake versions of these. They're like three or 400 bucks uh, off eBay. This is legit. How do I know? It came from Japan. This here is one of the most iconic seats of all time and the kind of seat that people actually use to win races. Bridge seats, or bride as they're mostly pronounced in Australia, produces high quality seats and rails in Japan. And they're the first seats from Japan to be licensed by the FIA, which means they can be used in international racing. The seat shells are made by hand with a single integral molding to increase fracture strength. The seat covers are then cut out and sewed and finished by hand. Then the shell, seat cover, cushions and other components are assembled again by hand before being inspected and then safety certified with stickers and a compliance certificate. No, your $299 eBay fake seats did not go through this process. I'm going to see if I can pick mine up with uh, one finger, we actually which can. I can. And mine's coming in at... Whoa! Seven. It's time to remove my factory seats and replace them with my mad grid seats from Japan. To make these fit, seat rails have been custom made in Japan and specifically for my car. Then it's just a matter of legoing it all together. The passenger seat is in and it looks absolutely incredible. Now it's time to move on to the driver's side. If you're playing around with anything to do with seats, seat belts, airbags or other safety systems in your car, make sure you check with a qualified mechanic or engineer if you don't know what you're doing. The seats are in, they look absolutely awesome. They feel incredible as well. I've got that excellent weight reduction, plus all of that support and bolstering to keep me in when I'm chopping Peugeots on the track. The next part of my build is going to be a roll cage made by AGI, which is an Australian company. So I'm not going Japanese for this one. I'm keeping it local. First of all, the car is going to get scanned with a 3D scanner, and this means all of the measurements are going to be exact. Then everything's made locally right here in Sydney and it can be installed in the car. We'll also be installing the harnesses at the same time. With the roll cage now installed and the seats and the harnesses all set up, it's time to move on to the alignment. If you're going to be spending any amount of reasonable time on the track, then probably the best money that you can spend other than your wheels and tyres is a proper alignment and suspension setup. Tyre pressures also are a big factor relating to your performance, plus the style of driving or racing that you're planning on doing. So speak to your suspension setup specialist and see what advice they've got for you and your car. With the alignment done, it's time to hit up the racetrack and see how the car is feeling before diving into even more modifications. I always really liked these cars. I liked the way they looked. I liked the spirit of them and I like that they're not trying too hard to be a race car. It feels like the little car that could. And now after all of these modifications, I feel like it's the little car that will. And I'm so excited to get behind the wheel. This is it, back at Ludnam. Tires warmed up. Okay, let's go, little Swift. Let's go. I'm not racing. 
race car driver, but I'm um, having a good time. There is a Porsche behind me, and I'm sure he's going to be wanting to get past at any moment. But I need to hang on to it because I need to get this lap time. Feeling good, let's go a little swift. With white smoke billowing out the back of my little swift, the check engine light on and the brakes faded, my time on the track was done. I really did try my best using all of the abilities that I had to try and drive as fast as possible. But with $25,000 spent on this project already, the car just couldn't hack its time on the track. And there are a few other things that I realized that I would need to do. I know you're looking at this Commodore and going, are you going to do one? One day we are going to do one, don't worry. But in the meantime, it's time to actually give my Swift the kind of attention and power that it deserves. I didn't actually gain any more power and I added a whole lot of weight to the car. So today, it's time to unwrap the full banana of my Hotel Banana Swift. It's time to do a full exhaust. It's time to wind in some more power. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're down here at Castle Hill Performance. I'm going to see Chris. We're going to work out how we can wind in some more some more output on the Swift. Come with me, let's get it done. There's a couple of things that I noticed on the track that really need to be fixed. Number one is it feels like there's some kind of exhaust restriction. So we're just gonna replace the whole thing all the way back to the Monster Sport muffler. I also had a coolant explosion at the end of my session, which I'm hoping didn't result in any engine damage, but we are gonna install an aftermarket radiator. I got the headers, I got these from the UK. I've got the axle back, sort of, cat, we didn't know whether to define that as a cat back because it is past the cat, but the axle back, that's Monster Sport from Japan. What do we do in between and how do I make it fast enough to beat a Peugeot? Well, for starters, we'll fit the headers. We'll do high flow cat. We'll do two and a half inch system all the way back. Join that up to your axle back. And then how much power potentially could I get with the headers, two and a half inch, high flow cat, I reckon we're going to pick up probably 10 to 12 percent, which okay. when you make not a lot is huge. <laughs> As we started removing the front of the factory exhaust, we noticed that there was lots of white powder falling out of it and onto the ground. Chris, why is this pipe full of white powder? Well, that's basically your catalytic converter is starting to deteriorate. So it probably explains why Marty beat you last time. Is that potentially making me more power because it's creating some flow or is Less. that not how it works? Not how it works. So it's starting to block up internally yep. and all this powder is basically the ceramic biscuit starting to fall out. The car smells so strongly of coolant and I'm really hoping that there's no damage. What we're going to do is remove the whole front section of the car which will give us better access to the headers but will also make it way easier for changing the radiator. With a custom exhaust going between our headers and the Monster Sport muffler, now we can move on to upgrading our radiator. Building this little car has been months in the making and has cost around $25,000 including the car and the modifications. It's probably one of those situations where you could buy a faster car for less money, except I managed to build this in stages spending smaller chunks of money each time to get it closer to what I was trying to create, which was a mad little Japanese inspired nugget. With the exhaust and the cooling system now upgraded, now we can go for a drive and see how these cars turned out. Everybody, I'm happy to report, after putting in that aftermarket radiator, the car drives great, no engine damage. So did a track day uh, last week. Uh, we both drove this car round and round and round and round for hours. The temperature didn't change. The power was consistent. The new exhaust sounds good. It's got a little raspy, doesn't it? Got a little raspiness and just... Oh, the tyres, dude. They're just... Especially on these good size, nice light wheels. Oh. And they're so grippy and they feel really good. So they're not noisy. Little cup twos, it's great. You know, I, I think sometimes you buy a car, you do lots of research, you look around and when it's all said and done, sometimes they can be a little disappointment. Massive, you know what I mean? Like, like oh... This, 
this car for me is the opposite. I agree. I had a lot of preconceived stuff about Swift, so I was like, yeah, I mean, Miles had a turbo one, which was awesome. Yes. But all the NA boring, I was like, no, I don't, I just don't get it. I'm not, yep. not, it's going to be hard to convince me, but after driving it fast at the track, yes, I get it. And the thing I is now, would own. just get in and go. We spent more than we thought we would. It has been a little bit over $25,000. And I know that if someone just said, do you want this car, stock and all the mods, like you'd go, well, for 25 grand, you could probably get turbo BRZs, yeah. Rexies and stuff like that. Yeah. But here's the thing with cars like this, and a lot of P players have to drive like this. You just do it bit by bit. So Marty, if you were to do this again, it's enough. It's enough, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. If you were to do it again, yes. Wheels and tyres obviously is a no-brainer. You put your Cup 2s on and you go. Yeah. If you were to do this again, of all of the mods we've done over the last few months, what would you do next and why? Uh, seat, but not that seat. I would absolutely get the best quality like seat, the fixed back thing I could find. Um, Too skinny for you, isn't it, this one? Well, this like, car, I was going to say, this, this car is like not to mix a lot. Yes. Like, he doesn't like big butts, like, I don't fit. It's also about what you can fit packaging wise. I'm a, I'm a seats, you know. 34 pants, which is pretty common for a six foot tall dude, and I do not fit into this seat. Yes. I've got them hips. Anyway, um, that's the first thing. Uh, and then, so not having to hold yourself with all your, you know, your, your core when you're driving. Yep. It means you can just drive longer on the track and it's more fun. Yes. Because if you're fighting against the seatbelt and you're, you're like, trying to hold yourself in and change gears and accelerate, it's actually physically not demanding and then you don't have as much fun. Yeah. So, so in a way then, held in. maybe we're going wheels, tyres, seats, seats, coilovers. Seats, coilovers, harness related stuff here, you know, whether it's a harness bar or a half cage like this, just so if you're going to do the track days. If you're not doing track day, you don't need that. And probably what I wouldn't spend the money on is like intake and exhaust. Yeah, we got a little bit extra, but I don't know if you'd really, really need it. If well, you're wondering why that is down there, the car. Uh, that five or six hundred dollar item, um, we we lost power with that one, unfortunately. So we've gone back to fail. Uh, uh, gone back to the stock uh, intake, uh, and it's making more power. So in our case, it uh, didn't work. No, it feels great. It's great. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for watching um, this mega episode of Suzuki Swift. Uh, we'll be seeing a bit more of this car. No doubt Marty will get another challenger for it. I mean, I believe you beat me before. Pre-exhaust and pre-radiator, I think you actually beat me because uh, I was overheating with the Peugeot. But it is a mad little nugget. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time on Mighty Car Mods.